So first of all, let me say um, thank you for being interested in this uh, small group leadership uh, because it's the heart of God to draw people into places where they can become a catalyst for someone else. Um, our vision for this small group ministry really comes out of uh, Matthew chapter 28 and it's where Jesus said that we're supposed to go to make disciples, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then make disciples of all the nations. And so uh, we've discovered that discipleship is not simply a Bible study. Discipleship is where your life intersects another person's life and you move them one step further on their journey of knowing Christ. And so really the heart of this is about you um, in your life uh, intersecting with unbelievers or believers and taking that one step in your life to help them take one step on their journey with Christ as well. Our core values are the same at His House Church, whether it's um, a congregational experience or a small group experience, and that is the C-O-R-E, the core of what we're doing here. And that is, the C stands for living in contagious love. And so that's a, one of those core values of our small groups is, is, as a leader, bringing this contagious love, receiving it, and then giving it away. Uh, o stands for receiving outrageous grace and um, the environment in which we want these small groups to take place is one in which you are um, receiving and giving uh, this amazing grace that we've been given through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, C-O-R, R stands for uh, resurrection power and it's the life of God and flowing in that life. And so um, part of the core reason that we exist as a church and the reason these small groups exist <clears throat> is an opportunity for the life of God to flow out of your life into other people. And then E stands for eternal destiny or helping people to walk in their eternal destiny. And um, we know that uh, God has created every one of us with a destiny to be with Him eternally, but there's also things that He's created us for in this earth. And um, by discipling other people, by loving them, by treating them in the same kind of grace that God treats us, by uh, letting the life of God flow out of us into them, we're helping them on their journey to fulfill um, their destiny on earth and their destiny uh, when they meet uh, Jesus Christ at the end of their life. And so I thank you that you're a part of that. Small groups provide three really important things. Um, and whether it's a small group of your own household or a small group of a worship team or it's a small group of basketball players playing sports together um, or a Bible study. In every kind of small group there's a dynamic that takes place that a small group provides a place for people to connect. We were never meant to be alone. We were created to be in need of each other. Uh, we don't have what the other person has. They have gifts that we don't have and, and we need each other. And the small group, um, more than anywhere else, provides a place for people to connect that sometimes can't happen in a larger setting. Secondly, it's a place to protect. It's a place to connect, but it's also a place to protect. And that protection is that we just watch out for each other, that we're, that we're, um, we're not nitpicking in people's lives, we're not trying to control people's lives, but there's a value, for instance, of the father in the home who sees his role of protection over his family and he's able to um, see things coming in their lives uh, that he can, through wisdom, head off and help them to, to avoid the mistakes that are coming down the road. In the same way, a small group can provide a place where you can help to protect people from um, some of the dangers that um, maybe you've already walked through and if you haven't, then God will give you the wisdom uh, to do that. <clears throat> Number three is a place to grow. You know, the Bible talks about is 
Um, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And there is a, a sharpening that takes place spiritually and in other ways as well that can really only happen in a small group setting because you're listening to the heart of another person. They're listening to your heart. You're bringing each other's gifts to bear. You're, you're hammering things out sometimes about um, what you believe and, and how does this line up with Scripture and what does this Scripture mean. And so there, there is a sharpening that can take place. Oh, again, we were not meant to be alone. Why small groups? Well, life happens in the context of relationships. Uh, we're designed for relationship. We, when God created Adam and Eve, there was a picture there of even with God, they needed uh, relationships to walk together and to strengthen one another. And, um, and so life happens best, not when we're alone, but when we're in the context of relationship with other believers. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship. There was a devotion to fellowship that actually was a part of the DNA of that early church that we want to maintain and see maintained, especially um, in these last days as people are so pulled apart and families have been poor, pulled apart. Um, secondly, you know, at our church, we believe that the church, in order for it to grow larger, the, the church has to grow smaller. In other words, in order for us to grow larger as a church, what's going to happen is that people are going to begin to feel disconnected. Their, their, their relationships, there's more people that they don't know and, and um, the responsibilities are getting spread for work and ministry among more people. And, and in order for there to be a maintaining of connectedness in the local church, um, we have to, while we grow larger, we have to purposely create small groups so that we can grow smaller in a sense of maintaining um, close relationships and connectedness in our local church. Um, we want to think of ourselves as a church of small groups rather than a church with small groups. And there's a big difference. A church can be a great big two, three thousand member church and have all kinds of, of ministries of small groups. But still, it's built on the idea of the big corporate event. What we've got to transition in the body of Christ is this shift to we're a church made up of small groups. If a person's on the worship team, they're a part of a small group. If they work with the video and the sound, they're a part of a small group. If they're uh, in the children's ministry department, then they're a part of a small group. Those groupings are, t are taking place all over the church, and we're actually a church of small groups so that we have to be intentional about the relationships within those groups and the care within those groups. And so um, that's one of the things that's a core uh, value to what we're doing at the church here. Now, we're going to be developing this ministry so that there is a coach or leader who will be over uh, these various small groups in the church. And the purpose for that is that um, their prayer covering for you, they are counsel for you, they're going to give you wisdom, they're going to be able to come, um, you've got questions and things that happen in your group and you don't know how to handle it, you've got somebody to go to who's uh, been there and done that, and so your coach is going to be your friend. And so we want to encourage you, the heart of small, small groups, that you're utilizing that coach um, for your personal growth, for you to be able to receive um, direction from. In fact, you'll find uh, that the way this model is set up that there's ongoing training um, primarily through the use of video either on DVD or our right now training uh, that will be sent an email out to you that will link you to a computer system and there will be regular training for small group leadership that's going on with some funny videos and some good things that you will enjoy and you'll be able to do it at your own leisure because not everybody has um, time to everybody show up on a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday. Um, instead, uh, you put the kids to bed, um, you take a few minutes, you study your uh, training and equipping uh, at your leisure, and then you're able to move on and do the rest of the stuff 
that you need to take care of. So what I want to talk about now is how we do small groups at his house. Now, we use a model called the free market group model, or the free market small group model. And it's designed so that uh, for the greatest ability to impact um, not only the church, but the world around us. Um, this is not a system where, uh, like an Amway system, where you recruit some and then they recruit some and you build this network of, of uh, people under you. Um, this is not about simply doing a Bible study, though you can do that if you want to. Uh, but the concept of the free market model is one that utilizes the concept of fivefold ministry and the interconnectedness that you have with the things that you enjoy doing and the people that you actually enjoy doing things with. So let me share with you six features of the free market small group system. Um, first of all, free market leaders, that would be you, are going to be able to use your gifts with your passions. Many times small group ministry is designed to put a round peg in a square hole. And we're trying to make people fit into something that they do out of obligation. They do it out of, um, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. Or the pastor told me I was supposed to. Instead, this is about you discovering what you're passionate about. It's discovering what your gifts are and to begin to utilize those by creating a small group around that. So number two, it's built on felt needs and common interest. Let me give you an example. You could be somebody who's really interested uh, in studying a book of the Bible. And you can do that and create a small group uh, and build it around that idea because that's your passion and you have a teacher gift. And that's wonderful and we encourage that. We need that. But there's others of you that maybe you love to play basketball. Uh, not in a league or anything like that. You just love to get together a bunch of friends and play basketball. Well, why not, instead of creating something out of the blue, why not use your existing network to cre create your small group um, and do a small group that's based around basketball? Well, what would that look like? Well, it would mean that you would get your guys together to go play basketball, um, but then your, your mission in that gathering of those to play basketball is to bring them discipleship, to bring them one step closer to Christ on their journey to Christ, or one step further along on their journey with Christ. And the options are limitless. A dance group, um, a biker group, uh, where the guys get together, they pray for one another, and then they go out and ride. They're doing something that they would do anyway, but they take advantage of their likes and their passions, and they help to disciple people just one step further. Some people aren't ready for a Bible study. They, they're not even sure they believe that God exists. But if you can create an environment where you can move them slowly one step further, then you'll find that we're discipling nations, we're discipling people, instead of just trying to get a notch on our belt because we got somebody saved. Uh, number three is the feature of a small uh, group free market system, and that is that you're meeting on a regular basis. Preferably weekly just seems to work better, but depending on the kind of group it is, it may be that it's every other week. But there's a consistency of you gathering together. And number four, is the characteristics of the free market small groups. Number four is that you're going to quickly identify an assistant so that you're not carrying this whole thing. Otherwise, it's defeating the purpose and we're only using your gifts and not other people's gifts. So you're going to be looking in that first initial gatherings uh, or even before you have your first gathering, you're looking for somebody who will be an assistant to you. And once that gets started, we also want you either to have that person or another person to be what we would call a caregiver or um, a care person in that group. That's the person that if somebody's sick, um, they're the one who's going to call and check on them. Um, if somebody ends up in the group in the hospital, they're going to call everybody else and let them know, 
hey, Joe's in the hospital. Um, if you can get a chance to go up there and see him, go. And so that, that key assistant and care person are a big deal in those first few weeks as you're developing this particular ministry. Number five, you want to be, this is the kind of group that um, normally you want to be able to welcome people in to the group at any time. You may be, it may be that it, this group is going to go for eight weeks and two weeks into it somebody wants to join um, and that's fine. We don't want it to be a closed group. We prefer it to be an open group, the free market group. So people can come in and they can see and they may just come in one time and, and it sets them up for another group down the road. Um, number six is that leaders are to maintain a healthy relationship with their coach. Now I know it depends, there's going to be different uh, kinds of groups but it doesn't matter what kind of group that you're leading. Remember that that coach is there for you. And if you can stay connected to that coach, then you will um, have a friend that will help to mentor and disciple you in the process. Now, as a leader, we want you to uh, be innovative, be creative. I mean, God has designed you uniquely with certain passions and interests. And there are other people who have similar kinds of passions and interests. And let's not see God as separate from those, but let's see God as a fabric of our lives so that that resurrection life that we possess and the character that we're walking in is able to impact people in those arenas of life. So let me give you just a few um, examples of different kinds of small groups um, in this free market model, and then we'll be done for this session. Uh, one is could be what would be called a one thing group and that's where you just gather a group of people together and you're going to deal with just one thing that over the semester a group of people are going to deal with the issue of fear or you're going to deal with an issue of worry or you're going to go after anger and you're just going to meet once a week as a group and um, let each other talk about how they're discovering freedom over that and overcoming that area and you can talk about scriptures related to it and um, th that's the kind of thing that you could invite lots of different people into a uh, story time group and uh, I'd love to see some of these that's it's where a semester you just spend time discovering the power of your life message of looking back at your past life and together as a group learning how to look at the past and see, yes, there are some things that are holding me back. Yes, but God created me uniquely and my story is important. And how is that story going to end? How can I shape with God the future of my life, the story that He's already written for me? Another one could be a spiritual gift group where you're just going after studying um, the gift of the word of knowledge or the gift of healing or the... the um, a gift of prophecy and you're just going to do that for one semester. You could do a course of Bible study, Hebrews, Revelation, uh, Gospel of John, Ezekiel, something like that. You could do a sports group, uh, basketball, baseball, soccer, karate class. Um, you could do a gaming group where you just get together and you play video games against each other and, um, and just begin to learn how to, how to love people closer to God in the middle of that. Um, a dinner or ministry group that's, that you go out uh, to eat each week with the goal of ministering to the waiter or waitress. You pray for whoever that's going to be ahead of time and, um, and you turn that into a ministry. Going out to eat can become your ministry. Um, you could do be a part of different small groups that are existing like Inner Healing Group, Sozo, um, a worship team, one of those kinds of small groups, prison ministry, a missions group. Be creative because there's lots of things that you're passionate about that are actually the key to opening up people's hearts. And so I bless you and uh, thank you for watching our first session uh, training small group leaders.